Welcome back to the podcast. I am so happy to have you with me today to discuss Panda Palooza. The beloved pandas have been in the news recently, and this is a topic that has tugged at our collective heartstrings because the parting pandas have caused such sweet sorrow. It certainly is never easy to say goodbye. So today we will talk about that and all things panda and the health lessons we can learn from them. This is the Wishing You Well podcast, and I am your host, Maria Patrick. I'm a certified health coach, and my podcast is a way for us to get together to talk about current topics and make them relatable to our health and well-being. So let the Panda Palooza discussion begin. Sadly, it is official. Last week, the two giant pandas, Mei Zan and Tian Tian, who called the Smithsonian National Zoo in Washington, D.C. their home for the past 23 years, and their cub, Xiao Qi Ji, who was born in 2020, have made the long 19-hour journey back home to China. They traveled home in style on a specially outfitted FedEx plane called the Panda Express, which was loaded with everything the pandas would need for their long journey, including over 200 pounds of bamboo, their favorite snack. The lead up to the sad goodbye included months of activities and special events at the Smithsonian National Zoo, and they entitled the whole thing Panda Palooza. The zoo referred to it as their giant farewell and said in their promotional materials, we are going big because they are going home. In order to see the giant pandas off in style, they created and hosted this Panda Palooza celebration, which was intended to engage audiences of all ages in a series of fun, family-friendly, and conservation-themed events, including photo ops, hands-on arts and crafts activities, a specially created kids area in the Great Meadow, coloring, stamping, and chalk activities, morning stretches and yoga classes, Plus, there were panda talks, temporary panda tattoos, a conservation-themed scavenger hunt, live music concerts, and they even had free film screenings of Kung Fu Panda and the Miracle Panda movies. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without panda-themed zoo food and beverages. Over the years, millions of lucky zoo visitors have had the chance to see the pandas, and many came out to bid them a sad farewell. It's been a program of diplomacy between our two countries, and among the many things which the program accomplished was educating us about the precious panda bears themselves, and also about ecotourism, extinction, conservation, and the importance of keeping mountain forests healthy. While I never got to see the Washington DC pandas, I did get to see the ones living at the San Diego Zoo in California before they went back to China in 2019. And I have long enjoyed watching videos of the pandas in their zoo homes, as well as their natural habitats. They always seem to be having such a great time, whether they are rolling around or coming down a slide or playing in the snow or the water, those adorable pandas get in their daily exercise and they have a ball while doing it. Every video I have ever seen of the pandas, and there are a lot of them out there, just go to YouTube and enter the words adorable pandas. Every video depicts them as carefree, frolicking, fun, and they jump on each other, they roll around together, they hug each other, and they sure do have a great time. It certainly doesn't seem like they're worrying about getting in 10,000 steps a day like we do. The zookeeper doesn't seem to be pushing them to work harder or track their progress. You know they don't have on Fitbits or Apple Watches strapped to their legs. They aren't worrying about how they look or if they have the latest athleisure wear or how much faster their neighbor is running or what their heart rate is. They are just doing their thing and doing it well. Many of the videos feature the pandas eating their favorite food, the bamboo shoots. They really get after it, and they seem to completely enjoy their bamboo meals. It made me wonder all about their their beloved bamboo. I have a personal bamboo story, which is that someone once gave me a beautiful bamboo plant. It was a lovely gift 
because it symbolizes good luck and great fortune. I'm very sorry to tell you that I killed that bamboo plant. Not intentionally, of course, but nevertheless, our mother plant relationship did not last very long. Since then, I have often thought about that sweet bamboo plant and wanted to know more about how I should have and could have taken better care of that evergreen perennial plant and its growth. So when I heard that the Panda Express plane was loaded with bamboo, I was once again thinking about it. I have two sons and they seem to know a thing or two about bamboo. They are one year apart in age, but as they were growing up, for years there was over a 12 inch difference in their heights. Many people mistakenly thought that one was three or four years older than the other. Well, son number two eventually sprouted up in height and came very close to catching up to his older brother's size. At the time, I overheard son number one saying to son number two, wow, you have grown so much so quickly. It's like you're a bamboo plant. Son number one definitely knew what he was talking about. Bamboos are some of the fastest growing plants in the world, with certain species having the ability to go, grow three feet within a 24-hour period, which is a rate of almost 1.5 inches an hour. Bamboo plants can actually grow as tall as a building. Do you know how long that takes? Well, for the first four years, there is absolutely no growth. Even when the plant gets watered and fertilized each year, Nothing happens for four years. Then in the fifth year, the bamboo plant shoots up 90 feet in only six weeks. So if I were to ask you, how long does it take the bamboo to grow 90 feet? Would your answer be six weeks? That is what I just told you, right? Wrong. If the bamboo plant hadn't been watered and taken care of during the first four years, it would have died just like my bamboo plant and it certainly would not have flourished in year five. What was happening during the four years when it looked as if there was no growth at all? Well, underground, an extremely large and strong network of roots was developing in order to support the bamboo plant's sudden growth. I think we sometimes forget that growth takes perseverance and patience and that every drop of water and fertilizer contributes to the growth process. I know that son number two knew that because every time someone asked him, and so many people did, when are you gonna catch up to your brother? He would very calmly and patiently answer, I will get there. I know that I'm growing in my own time. What a life lesson wrapped up in the bamboo plant and in the wise words of son number two. He handled the situation quite well, which believe me, wasn't always easy because someone even once asked him if all of the nutrition in our family was being given to his brother and not to him. We may not always see the changes or the growth, but we have to keep the faith that growth is happening. We expect year five growth, like what happens with the bamboo, to happen immediately in everything that we do. We forget that it takes time for roots to take hold and grow. We have to nurture those roots with fertilizer and time, commitment, and perhaps the most difficult and yet important thing of all, patience. If we stay committed to achieving our growth goals, we will eventually break through, sprout up, and like the bamboo, reach the highest point. So when I think back to my little bamboo plant, did I forget to water and fertilize it all those years ago? Was I discouraged when I didn't see any growth? Probably, I honestly can't remember. My goals are different now and they include so much more than just keeping the houseplants alive. I dream of personal growth and new achievements and I focused particularly right now on the areas of health and fitness and growing my business. Perhaps I need to get a new bamboo plant for inspiration and watch some panda videos for their life lessons. Then I will be reminded that growth will come in time and you can't stop fertilizing and watering the bamboo. And like the pandas, I should most definitely have a good time while I am living out the process. Do you have your own personal growth goals? Will you remember to nurture, feed, fertilize, and water your bamboo? I would love to hear your story. 
and I welcome you to share your comments with me. And please don't forget, I'm here as a health coach to help you with that growth and remind you to take care of yourself and your equivalent of the bamboo plant, whatever that may be. Thank you for tuning in today. I am so very grateful for your interest in my podcast and for your time. And as always, I am wishing you well. Mm -hmm.